three, two. G'day YouTube, my name's Lance. Welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well, the weather report, eight to 24, um, which isn't too bad. The um, 24 is a nice, nice working weather. Um, eight's a little bit cool, but that's not too bad, eh? So, um, yeah, haven't felt the need to put a coat on yet, so this morning, so see how we go. Um, sun's not up yet, so it won't be long. It's still a bit dark outside, so we'll see how it goes. It'll warm up as soon as the sun comes out. We'll find a nice sunny place to sit. But um, we didn't get a stew done last week. Um, we went camping down Kinkuna National Park with the um, Dave and Jody and Mick and Margaret, the friends we went to Cape York with this time last year. And um, look, we had a great camp. We just sat around and ate and cooked a roast and yeah, just had a nice time. <laughs> sat and ate and drank and um, looked at the beach and um, we actually had a, <laughs> we had a pet brown snake near the camp. And um, yeah, we're just sitting there and I looked over behind the girls and here's this brown snake. And he, look, he would have been five foot long if he was a, if he was a bit. And um, anyway, I said to myself, look, there's a brown snake behind you. Um, but he's just sunning himself, he'd be right. And um, so they had a look and um, then okay, so we kept an eye on him and he moved away. And um, it worked out there's a, there's a tree coming along and then there's a hole in the bottom and that was his, his place where he was having a camp. And um, we kept an eye on him but we didn't bother moving. Um, look, he was probably, from where we were sitting, four metres away I suppose, so 12 feet, something like that. And um, he sort of knew we were there and he wasn't worried about us and we weren't worried about him so we left him there but we did keep an eye on him and um, he'd go down over the bank and have a snoop around then he'd come back and hop in his hole and he'd be in his hole there and we'd, we knew where his hole was so we didn't go near him, you know, we stayed away from his hole and he'd stick his little head up and have a look around and doodle about and he'd keep an eye on it and um, we don't know if it had eggs or what it had in there um, and yeah early in the morning that he'd be down in the hole hiding and um, as the sun come out and he needed to warm up, he'd come out and he'd, he'd sit up on the bank there and warm himself up and yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, we camped with him for three days. And, um, and as the, on the Sunday night, um, Dave and Jody went home Sunday, then on the you know, Sunday night, they said a bit of rain might come in. So we, we thought about packing up and going home, we thought, oh no, you know, we're having a nice time, we'll just stay there with our other friend Mick and Margaret. So we stayed there and then on the Monday morning the rain came in and um, we all had to pack up in the wet and head home. But um, coming into Kinkuna there, you've got all these um, swampy holes sort of thing. But when we come in, it was nice and dry and the sand was soft and had to have the tyres down to 20 pound and poke along. But um, yeah, just with the overnight rain, well, these holes were probably well, they were halfway up the wheels. And I've got 33 inch wheels on the car, so. Um, they were halfway up the wheels and um, we just got out and the National Park said, oh, due to the rain coming and that, they were closing the park. So we had to go anyway. So fair enough, we, we got home, packed up, um, got home and everything, yeah, when you pack up in the sand at the beach, everything gets sand stuck to it. So we had sand stuck everywhere. The camper trailer was damp. And um, so I've got the camper trailer set up in the carport where it lives and it's all open up to air and some of the tarps we had and all that are all out drying and they're pretty dry now later today i'll go and tidy it all up again but um, the leads going out to the solar panels and yeah i had to get the hose and wash all the solar panels off and all the leads and the chairs you know make sure there was no salty sand on the chairs and um, so they're all dry ready to go the utes had one bath um, and I vacuumed it out yesterday inside, but um, yeah, it'll get another, it'll get a proper soapy wash today and I'll pressure clean all under the chassis again. Um, it had a half assed one the other day. When we come home on Monday, I brought the camper trailer and the car up the back and in the rain, I pressure cleaned all underneath and around, but um, I didn't want to lay on the grass and <laughs> all this shit. So um, they both need another proper soapy sudsy wash. Um, yeah, with a bit of that, you know, the polish with a bit of wax in it sort of thing just to uh, make sure there's no salt sand anywhere but um, all the hitch had sand all over it so I, I washed all that away just so there's no no um, 
salty residue or that. Even though we didn't go right down onto the sandy, onto the salty beach, um, there's still salt in the air at those places, and you know the sand has to have some. Even the sand up the top has to have some salt on it. So um, the little tomahawk I'd sharpened up, well, yeah, it's just got surface rust on it. So it can be from rain or whatever. So, so yeah, we come home and I thought, oh well, um, packing up in the rain in a hurry. I buggered my knee up again, and it bloody gave me curry last week. So. I thought, oh, well, I'll get a stew done, but, well, it just pissed down rain. <laughs> it pissed down rain for three days, and um, I thought, oh, well, it's getting a bit late to do the stew now. And um, But we ended up with 104 millimetres of rain, and which was great. All the tanks have overflowed, and they, were, they weren't dangerously low or anything, but they, the top-up was nice. And, yeah, the dams are looking a lot better than they were. Um, yeah, they're nearly up to the culvert under the driveway, so that helps us out a lot with water over the coming season. And um, so, yeah, but I, I couldn't film anything, even in my little shipping container. Um, the noise on the shed outside was that loud that even with the doors shut and all that, I was just getting blown out sound all the time. So I thought, oh, bugger it, won't worry. And then, um, and then Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, our internet went down, went out, and. Um, had no internet and I thought oh well it must just be a little outage sort of thing and I shut the modem off and shut everything down and restarted it and did all the usual stuff and um, yeah it wouldn't come on so yeah Thursday after lunch there we were on to Telstra about it um, about the NBN and oh they didn't have any outages in the area it must be our gear and I said well we just got a brand new wall thing for the um, for the tower over the back and it's got three green lights and the signal strength is weak but it's always weak and um but we, we have quite good internet when it's working so um anyway we buggered around and they did a reset and they couldn't reset the modem from telstra so i had to you know reset the whole thing press the button and uh, get it all the passwords in and all that rubbish again and, and yeah come good thursday night so i thought well um because i didn't go to work um because I was just having on home duties with me knee working out of my office up there. Um, yeah, we didn't get, <laughs> I didn't do a steal, it was just too late. And I thought, oh bugger, it's only a couple of days till Monday, we'll have to wait. So so that's what happened. Um, so this is our first due for a fortnight. Um, we hit 50,000 subscribers. <laughs> Who would have thought? Um, yeah, look, that's a, I suppose, look, it's taken nine years to do it and nine years of barely missing a week or, um, you know, some weeks when I've got a lot happening in the shed and I've got time to film and all that, you know, we were putting out two and three videos a week and, um, but the old stews were up to 370 something or other stews alone, just our weekly chat. So, um, and look, so there, yeah, thank you for your support. Um, um, people watch us and, yeah, the, the stews, you know, we get, a, we get 1,500 views on a stew every week, I suppose, which is not a lot, but that's fine. Um, everyone seems interested in what happens in the shed here um, and what happens in our lives. And it's just, a, it's just a bit of a vlog on, yeah, what's going on at our, at our property here, at our place. So, um, yeah, so the, the, as Barry says, your, your time's appreciated that you put into it. Um, the videos that we've put out there, there are... Um, uh, and, and I think some of the reason it may be successful is because the videos, just to pick a subject on um, how to adjust the linkage on your TE20 tractor, the lift linkage, they're timeless. Once the video's out there, um, that doesn't change from year to year, where the, the stews are topical on what's happening now um, in our lives, um, how to tighten your cylinder head or do your tappets, um, just, you know, valve adjustments or... Um, put piston rings on. They're timeless. Like they're, they're a library there that we've built up, and um, I think that's this part of the success of it. Is um, we, we explain things in layman's terms, hopefully, and um, that library. You know, you can someone that watched the videos a year ago can watch it again tomorrow, and the information's still there. So um, I think that's part of the thing. Um, but anyway, look, I do appreciate the support. Um, I might, we might have a little bit more time soon. Um, we, we've got a few things in the go. Um, well, we've got a lot on the go, absolute heap on the go. <laughs> um, 
Um, the people looking at buying the business, the solicitor, talking to the solicitor on Friday, he said, I'll see you early in the week to sign the contract. Eh? And I said, OK, then. So, um, so we haven't signed them, but it's positive. We're expecting today or tomorrow to be in there doing the contracts. Um, yeah, the, the people looking at buying it, um, I told them if they're serious, get the contracts drawn up and check with the accountants how it should be and all that. So they're at the solicitor stage now. They've got the contracts pretty well drawn up. Um, some of the conversations I was having with my solicitor, my lawyer, um, on Friday afternoon, um, and it was just about the lease. You know, we Judy and I own the sheds and we lease it to Queensland Tractor Spears, our business. But um, the lease is coming due in November. The party buying it, they want to lock into the lease and they want to make sure that um, there's another three years to go on that, but they want to make sure there's another three years after that. And we say, look, that's fine by us, just whatever it takes. So, so that's looking positive. I'll have more news on that next week if um, we get it all signed off and there's no worries there. Um, it's um, count you, <laughs> don't count your chickens before they hatch sort of thing. So, um, but look, it is positive, they're keen. Um, they're keen, and look, we're keen. Um, you know, it's time probably. We're, we're pretty happy to um, be able to pull the pin and retire if it all comes off, um, as it appears that it will. So we'll just see about that. Um, a couple of things have to happen, though, and it's um, increasing the workload tremendously. And um, some of the stuff, like the Bundy Bear Shed shirts and stubby coolers and all that have to come out of Queensland tractor spares. Um, my office has to be cleaned up, you know, all of my little tractors I've kept and I'm keeping the ute. And, um, so we might have to get roadworthies on vehicles and fiddle fart around in general. And, um, but the other thing that's happening here is that my little shipping container machine shop, we're actually going to dismantle all that. And look, there's a couple of reasons. One is I filmed the videos here in Bundy Bear's shed and the internet at home has been absolutely shit over the years and in my little shipping container um, I have been trying to work out of there but I've got to have the door open you know the Faraday cage thing and we actually tried a, a booster and you know a booster on an outside power point to come in and then put another booster on the inside one and bring it back through but it's look it works but when you're doing videos that are one and two gigabytes um, it just takes bloody forever like it's hours to get, get it going, so, or else I've got to pack the computers up and take them inside. And, um, in the back door, we've got a garage, and it's just a single car garage, um, six metres, so 20 foot long by 3.3 metres wide, I think it is. So that's 10, 11 foot wide. And, uh, but that's where all the, that's where all the internet stuff is and the modems for the, NBN and all that sort of stuff. So, um, if I do a speed test out in my shipping container, um, I'm I'm getting download speeds of like five meg, ten meg sort of thing. Um, if I do a speed test in that little room there with that, I'm up to 80, 85 meg. So, um, so what we're going to do with it is um, we're going to move my office desk and all that out of the shipping container. I've got to revamp the whole bloody garage there, and we were going to put the we were going to air con it and put the lathe and the mill in there. But look, we're thinking about it, and it's probably not a good idea um, because it's on the house, it's off the kitchen. You walk out of there straight into the kitchen. You can have mats and all that, but I find now when I walk out, brush my feet and all that, um, a little bit of rubbish comes up on the back veranda at home. So. Um, and there's a roller door at the front there, and yeah, it'd be a nice place to work. You know, you could have the nice breeze come through, but those little bits of metal that get around, we have grandkids walking around there with bare feet and things like that. So it, it just doesn't make sense to do that. So, um, so we've got a, we're going to, because we can't use the shipping container as an office um, and things like that, we're going to bring the whole lot, we're going to bring the lathe and the mill back up here and we've got places for it and we've got the power points here for it where they were a few years back but we've got ways um, originally we were getting a bit of condensation up here but we've we've got that sorted now and um, um, and there's room for toolboxes and things like that but um, we are 
gonna just pull the bloody shed apart in here and we're gonna rejig it and um, there's an awful lot of work in that <laughs> and so um, where my where my sound equipment is the lathe's gonna go there but some of these old fridges are gonna disappear um, a couple of filing cabinets gonna disappear behind the bench over the back there where I've got all these old plastic pots full of shit that's going um, we're going to reline that part of the shed with iron and um, we're going to have things things that clutter the floor up like the tracks for splitting tractors they unbolt so we're going to put sturdy hooks up and get all that up off the floor um, the lathe and the mill are coming in there the two drill presses and the big drill are going there the wheel roller it's going over under where i keep some of my spare wheels tractor wheels um, the press is probably going to end up up the other end there the my mobile workbench that has the blue toolbox on it it's going to go up the end there the welding table that's in the corner is going to go near the front post near the front door so when i'm grinding i'm grinding outside not into the shed the anvil outside we've got to find a nice hunk of timber to put the anvil on and bring that in um, so the, all this this part here where we do the filming of the videos it's staying <coughs> We've got some old fluoros up on the roof up here that barely work, they're very dull. Um, they're coming out and we're putting LED spots, so if I'm working on the bench over there, we're good. Um, the grinders are all going to go up near the door there, so they're grinding. Um, we can keep that clean and sweep it out. Um, the tractors where I've got the John Deere split and the David Brown and all that, that's getting all cleaned up and we're going to actually have four designated working bays in there. Um, they'll be nice long bays and um, with room each side to pop wheels off and things like that so we have room for four bays and um, we'll work with that. that those four bays they don't count the bay here where I have the 65 because that's got the best lights for filming the 65 restos but um, the other ones where I'm playing with tractors bits and pieces like the Massey 20 and that well, the light's good enough over there and we can bring extra lighting in. So, so the whole shed is getting a whole revamp. Um, Paul's coming to help a bit. Um, there's going to be some stuff chucked out. Um, uh, I have an air conditioning compressor off a 7800 John Deere that I've had for 20-something years. Couldn't sell it. Um, <laughs> I took it out of the shop. Um, sometimes there's warranty parts. You know, we own a tractor parts business and you have warranty parts that are um, something wrong with them. I've brought them home and I've just been chucking them under that bench and chucking them under this bench and I was looking the other day and I've got front kingpins where the keyways are in the wrong place and um, the bearing surface is wrong or you know some machining thing and um, they tell us oh well just scrap that or you know they'll give us a credit for it and yeah take that home Lance or chuck it in the tip or whatever you do so I bring it home because you know even just to cut the end off the kingpin and have a nice piece of turned steel you know for the lathe it's, it's worth doing. And so. So I've got sort of, we've worked out half a plan, um, where the parts are for the 65 here, they're all going, and the sound bench and all that, we're gonna run power straight off the hoist, straight down into there for that. Um, so that'll give us the sound right near where we're doing the filming. It'll be closer than it is. Um, where the press and the other wheel around toolbox is, the big black toolbox is up in the shipping container are going there. Um, <coughs> I mean, yeah, there'll be two, then one on the back of it sort of thing, so, <clears throat> I mean. Um, and what it's about is if, if I don't have the shop and I don't have the shipping container up there with the air con, and we're gonna sell the shipping container, like it's been undercover pretty well all its life. Um, it's got a two kilowatt air con on it, and it's got its own earth leakages and circuit breakers and power points and data cabling and all that from when we had it at the shop. Um, but we're going to take that out of there, sell it. Um, you can plug a 15 amp lead in, and the whole show runs nicely. Yeah, you know, the fluoros, we've got LED fluoros in there, and all that. So we're going to sell that for about five grand. Um, it's got a bit of lino on the floor and things like that. But we're going to clean it up, get that out of there. Um, that'll give us our four car parks back. We've got to fix the fence at the house and all that. So um, these are jobs that. Um, 
if the shop goes through, um, this will be the only place. I'll have way more time to do videos and work on tractors and things, which is what I want to do. Um, I want to wheel and deal in tractors a bit, you know, buy them, do them up, film, film doing them up and sell them and <coughs> things like that. But you need a couple of working bays going at any one time because I, I find in the shop here, like I've got the 65, I've got the final drives here that look, I'll, I'll probably get onto them anyway, even though, you know, I, I'll just use the lift and gear, but um, I'm going to try and clear the front here so for each bay I can get the forklift in and each bay will be about the width of the gantry so I can run the gantry in and do the lifting that I need to do. So um, The stuff there that I've been cleaning out, like I've started the clean up and um, the tidy up and the stuff there I've had 25, 30 years that I haven't used and not going to use so bloody old spanners and that that just don't fit anything, they're Chinese, they're bloody just dicky things that I've had for years. Um, a, a whole four litre paint tin of sockets I've kept. I couldn't chuck them out, but some of the spanners I've chucked away. Um, I'm finding lynch pins and, and pins I've had over the years, but um, because we've been busy and um, I don't normally have days off, um, you know, if I'm not working at work, I'm working at home here doing stuff, but um, and the stuff builds up. You know, I get parts from Sparex for David Brown say, and it's got parts all over its seat waiting for us to get to it. Um, the multi-power tractor, we need to do something with that. So it'll have its own bay and we'll, we'll hook in and get that pretty well done. There's not a heap to do to that, but um, you can't actually see it because of the junk I've got on it, flat surfaces. So anyway, the whole shed is going to have a great big clean up. Um, there's a couple of jobs I need to finish John Dudley's engine. Um, he's going to get me a piston, but I haven't heard what's going on there. Um, yeah, we just need to tidy a few things up, finish a few loose ends off, and then um, we should have a nice workflow because I'll have nothing else to do. <laughs> so imagine that. Um, <clears throat> the Massey Ferguson 20, um, I got a bit of Bearco Industrial Yellow, it's supposed to be Industrial Yellow paint, and I tidied up all the bits and sprayed a couple of bits, and that, it was just way, way too light. So um, through the week, I, I got the air cleaner and um, polished up a piece right down under the air cleaner and I took it to town and we actually matched some paint for it and it's at the wholesale paint distributors on Walker Street and um, I took it into them and they said oh it's a bit little to put under the computer thing but they got these little cards out and the old bloke I used to deal with has sold the business to them and, and they, had, they were putting new staff on and they, they were a bit disorganised, it took me an hour or something there because they were training people as we went which that's fine I'm happy to help with that and um, anyway they got this little card and they said geez that's close and I think it's part number 1650 or something like that and um, I said yeah it looks good to me and he said oh it's got a bit too much green or something and I said look I, <laughs> I don't know and um, anyway he gets the thing takes it over to the book puts it up and he said you know that's a Massey Ferguson colour <laughs> I said is it really it's a bloody uh, Massey Ferguson yellow, industrial yellow. I thought, well, I'll be bugging. Here they picked it out of a card, not knowing what that card did, and that's about the closest. So he had a good eye. He was a rep there, and um, he had a good eye. So um, on the weekend, I, while it was sunny, I raced out and re-sanded everything and blew a bit of paint on it. Pretty shitty paint job. Um, yeah, I was, <laughs> I was out the back, and it was sort of half shady, half sunny, and I can see... I've got a couple of runs on some bits and, and a little bit thin on others. But look, um, the idea of doing that is we're not going to paint the whole tractor. We just, um, like the silver headlights off a 100 series, um, all the headlights come in silver, so I wanted to paint them yellow. I had a black seat um, and a red seat frame. <laughs> and um, the stabilizers I bought for it, for the linkage arms, they were red. And um, I just wanted more, yeah, the kingpin, the new kingpin I put on. Um, was black so it was black this yellow that and it was all different colors even though the tractor's theme is black and yellow so I've painted the seat the seat frame the two headlight surrounds the two stabilizer bars and um, I've got some new rims over there um, with tires on it and I'm, we're putting new tires on the front and um, what I've done I've actually got some brand new rims I've painted them the industrial yellow 
and maybe today if time allows if I can do that. Um, the old foot plate on the right hand side where the foot throttle was, the brackets were there but the foot throttle was missing. So I've bought an aftermarket foot throttle but I'm using the original pedal, it's been welded up but it just looked nicer than the, than the aftermarket one I felt. So um, I've painted that foot pedal, um, I've left the bracket unpainted but then the foot pedal that I put on I've painted and I've, I see you sitting there I've missed a bit on it but I'll have to get the paintbrush out and have a little, little dab. <laughs> So um, I'm hoping today to put a little bit of time into that um, because of the rain and that we, I hadn't been doing anything on the Dexter. Um, I went and bought a brand new battery for the Dexter and the battery leads. Um, oh, not the Dexter, sorry, the Ford 2000 petrol. So um, yeah, so I've still got the carby apart. I haven't taken that um, that um, fuel pump plunger out of the carby up to. Um, to sort it out yet, um, which I'll have to do. It's still sitting in pieces over there. Um, but yeah, Friday I was home trying to sort stuff and I had visitors. Just, yeah, John come in, John Kirby come in for a couple of hours and um, Greg Walker come in for a few hours and by the time you have a yarn and bug around, well, there's your day gone. So anyway, it's all good. I don't mind a chat. Yeah, so. so yeah, a bit of excitement going on, but there's going to be a lot of shed work, a lot of stuff getting chucked out and... Um, Reorganising some stuff, and you shed blokes will know some stuff you just keep, and you don't know why you keep it, but it just looks handy, so you keep it. <laughs> but I'm trying to sort through that. Plus, a heap of dad stuff come into the shed. It's up in pallets. I need to sort that, and um, we, we're going to try and get a nice part system working here, just for the restorations. So we'll see how we go. But okay, that's it for this week. I'll um, I'll take the camera for a little walk and show you what I've been up to. Um, but yeah, not a lot. I've been spending a lot of time looking at cleaning, measuring, how long's that toolbox, how high is it, where will that fit? So um, not a lot happening, but look, as always, your time is much appreciated and um, we'll catch you all next week, eh? See ya. Well, the sun is almost up. The Land Cruiser's still got the canopy on it. Um, it's got to stay on for this next weekend. We're going on a tractor trek. Um, I'll take the cameras, we'll film some of that. So it's a camping weekend next weekend with a tractor trek. Um, we'll be going there. I haven't got the new trailer yet. They reckon sometime this week. So um, the old trailer's sitting there with some pallets. I'll have to, um, I've got a bit of sorting out to do to that. The um, Kemp boys are buying that office. Um, so yeah, they borrowed it the other week. And so they're, I mean, they're gonna take that off our hands. Um, the little Ford 2000, I haven't done anything with those panels that didn't fit. Um, I have a nice new battery sitting there and I have new battery leads but I have to sort the carb out before we before we do anything extra there so when I get time for that we will see. Um, when we come in the door here, these are, here's a little bit of paint I missed because I had it hanging up the wrong way. Um, but the cushion will cover that, but um, a bit of bird poop got on there and it sort of half stained it, but that won't be seen either. So I've got the rubber back on there, the headlight surrounds, yellow's a bugger of a colour to paint I reckon, so they're all dry now, so they'll, they'll go on the Massey 20. Now with the front badge on the Massey 20, see how it's too low? So I have to make a little plate and bring that up higher. And you'll notice on the 135 it's sort of central. So I've used the alloy bar and the badge at Rich centres, but I do need to make a little bracket to bring that up to, to keep it nice and even. I'm not happy with that. Then over here, you can see where I bought a, an aftermarket um, foot plate kit. And if I come around here, whoop, knocking stuff down. Yeah, that's that's the aftermarket foot plate, but I'll keep that for another job. And one of the brackets, but the original bracket, the original bracket had these welds there, and oh, they're big, daggy-looking things. So I ground them down, and I'd prefer to use that. 
I've got to clean all the paint out of the threads here yet though. Whoop, get out of there, Lance. So that'll be okay. Um, we're going to use the old pivot bracket because it'll match the tractor. And that's the after the aftermarket pedal we're putting on it. And I missed some paint somewhere there. Somewhere. Anyway, the paint missed. Um, the if I come around the other side. I just blew a bit of paint on there, a bit on the tyre, a bit everywhere, but that's only just going to be to hold the tractor up, that one. Um, we're not going to use that rim for anything, so um, what we're going to do is, um, I'm just going to have a couple of rims like that, and if I need a tractor on reels to paint something, just roll it around, um, I'm just going to use that rim and probably this one here with that tyre with a big cut in it and all that, and they'll be our knockabout paint things and do that with them so we'll just see that um, the the panel that went under the dash I've got a bloody big run there which I'm going to try and take that out if I can um, not that it'll be seen but and a ladybug <laughs> I couldn't win a trick with painting the other day a little lady beetle landed in it so not much you can do there and the little stabilizer it's a bit hard for you to see that but they're all they're all done and on so won't be long and this will be a bit tidier and running I do have the rims painted out the back and if we come for a little walk over here oh I put the lights a couple of new lights on the forklift I'm not happy with that really so you know, I'm thinking of taking these brackets off and seeing if the thread under here actually screws into one of these things there I don't need the indicators we're not going to be registered so I can probably take these brackets off and put these smaller lights in that bolt hole there and have them nice and high shining down. So we'll see. We'll see. And I have to strip the tyres off these wheels here. And because I've painted the rims for the Massey 40, uh, Massey 20, sorry, I've painted the rims. Um, these tyres and tubes will go on the nice painted rims. So, But I'm doodling along here tidying stuff up um, that toolbox is going plasma Dave you could have that if you felt like it um, I've got a pump that was on the hoist one time I don't know whether the pump buggered up or the motor <laughs> buggered up I can't remember it's been that long I've had it that long um, so that's getting chucked out there's a Delco air compressor off of John Deere I've had for like 30 years never been on a tractor <laughs> There's the kingpins and things like that I was talking about. Um, they've all got something wrong with them, but um, yeah, it's just good steel for lathes and things. And then as we go under the bench, I've got like hose clamps and oh, just all sorts of old shit. Look, there's a spare David Brown hydraulic pump. That went through the flood, but it's probably good still, but it went through the flood. And because it's probably good still, that's why I've still got it. And all these pots and all that, they're, um, they're going to get shifted. Back when I built the shed in 2000, we had no power, so I, got a, I put a car radio there on a 12-volt battery and a set of speakers and a radio aerial there. Well, that's been 20 years, and I probably haven't used it for 20 years. This iron here is getting taken out, and then from this bench right up to under that sign, <coughs> pardon me, there's going to be vertical iron, and that's where we're going to hang all the stands and then under the bench here, once I clean that up, <coughs> pardon me, um, once I clean all this shit up, there's plenty of room over the other side there for that. That's where the splitting trolleys will sit, down in under there, so. A lot to do, um, but yeah, I'm just going to pace myself and go along with it. There's rubbish everywhere and, oh, well, some of it's rubbish, but yeah, I'm going to set up a couple of nice big shallow bolt bins um, things like that but we'll just see but yeah the place looks like a bomb went off but it always does so <laughs> we'll just go with that eh? <laughs> 